Good morning. It's Wednesday, July 26, 2023. My name is Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Leadership 101. In our scriptures, Matthew chapter 12, where the apostle quotes Isaiah's prophecy. Look at my servant whom I have chosen. He is my beloved who pleases me. I will put my spirit upon him, and he will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not fight or shout or raise his voice in public. He will not crush the weakest reed or put out a flickering candle. Finally, he will cause justice to be victorious, and his name will be the hope of all the world. The religious leaders, Pharisees, were concocting a plot to kill Jesus because he did such horrible things like heal a crippled man on the Sabbath. Well, that was the premise. The real reason was Jesus' popularity with the masses and the resultant diminishing power of the Pharisees. Becoming a Pharisee gave one power over others, and there are few who give up that kind of power once they have it. The insurrection of January 6, 2021 ought to be viewed in that light. By contrast, Matthew, the former tax collector, holding riches and a fair amount of power over his countrymen, was now a disciple of Jesus. He looked at the unfolding drama of Pharisees versus the upstart preacher and immediately recalled Isaiah's prophecy. The ancient prophet said God's chosen Messiah would not be a power monger, shouting orders and brawling. He would be the victorious hope of the entire world, in the gentlest of ways. This is one of the most startling countercultural statements one finds in Scripture about true leadership. By nature, countercultural movements are defined by confrontation. Truth confronts lies, darkness confronts light, hope confronts despair. So, wherever counterculture and presiding culture intersect, you will also find confrontation. In the realm of good and evil, it's a spiritual war fought in the recesses of the mind and evidenced in behavior we accept or would even die for. In the penultimate war between heaven and hell, eternity's finest leaders set the pattern for all leaders, meekly hanging on a cross for the souls of all humankind. What Jesus enacted on the cross was the shedding of blood for the remission of sins for the whole of humanity for all eternity. Hebrews chapter 9, 22. A side benefit of seeing how he did this, humbly, the quiet sacrificial lamb offering himself for our lives, is to see the quintessence of true leadership. It's the embodiment of what God told the prophet Zechariah about the way Zerubbabel would cut a path to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. Zechariah chapter 4. It's not by force, nor by strength, but by my spirit, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. The work of Christ on the cross for us was, in the eyes of Rome's Caesar and even the apostles and much of the world today, it was a small beginning. And it's a reasonable thought. One man's death is hardly noticed by the world. But the death of one inhabited and led by the Spirit of God to do the work of the Father is that which brings rejoicing in heaven. For you today... You may consider yourself inconsequential in the grand scheme of world history. You may also imagine your footprint will be washed away with the next tide when you draw your last breath. But if the psalmist is right, that thought cannot be right. Psalm 116, precious in the sight of the Lord, is the death of his saints. Lest we forget that the Lord rejoices over the smallest of beginnings in His service, whatever you have done, led by His Spirit, done in righteousness for His name, will live on as the holy temple built without human hands. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.